drama unfolds in Paula. Hey everybody, Walt Do Honors, buckle up, strap in. I got a hard hitting pull, no punches, no sugar coating, no rainbows, no sunshine. I'm just gonna give it to you and give it to you straight. We got a good one to unpackage today as the Paula National, the A1 of the outdoors is complete a lot to unpackage if you're new please subscribe subscribe right away never been a more important time in moto history to get centered and surrounded with like-minded moto people iron will sharpen now we're going to sharpen some iron today my friends and blow the lid off yet another one here's the thing my friends here is the thing a lot to unpackage not sure if we'll be able to get it all in in this episode but we should have some stuff to digest throughout the week but the number one thing, what is the number one thing we can take away from Paula, dude? Insane. Jet was pretty much toying with the field. Chase kept him honest in that second moto, but it still didn't look like Jet was really ever really pressured. He didn't even know he's looking back at him like he's acknowledging him. That he was never worried once. About Chase. And I was, is it me? Or did you guys see this too? It seems like Ch Jet has a little bit of a, a chip on his shoulder lately. He's a little bit uh, tense and, and intense behind the camera. He's not super happy-go-lucky. All his interviews looked a little bit forced. I don't think he digs committing to the whole donut merchandising thing. I know it watered down his image. And you notice how he's starting to look hard now. He's got some tattoo. But you got to hand it to Jet Lawrence. He has clearly got way more talent in his pinky finger than the rest of his field. And the kid, he's built. So he's built perfect for the bike because he's stringy. Like his waist is this big. His neck is huge. It's, it's as big as his waist. But he's so fluid and effortless and just dancing around he's at he's a lot more comfortable with that bike than chase now chase hats off clearly clearly firmly has he's gonna he's always the bridesmaid never the bride in supercross the championship he got it courtesy of eli's freak injury let's just call it for what it is last year same thing he had he had Eli to deal with. He's going to deal with Chase uh, Jetson this year, I believe, in the same exact way. Now, the only thing I will say, the only consolation for Chase Sexton is why bring Honda Championship when you're not even you're already probably got your plans and deals probably done. You're gone. Your your history. So for you, it's like why risk it all? But this could this could be a really really good one. Now let's move. To the 250s, Hunter Lawrence pulls it off, but Danger Boy, do you notice something? Danger Boy, congratulations. Your hazing period is done. We gave Danger a pretty good hazing as he was ushered in through the amateurs to the pros last year in the outdoors, and he cartwheeled it in spectacular fashion, and, and we were like, hey, you might have rushed it in, bro. You could have probably waited a little longer. Then he gets hazed a little bit in Supercross early on. But then he shapes up to end Supercross well, and he started outdoors well. Hayden Deegan, Deegan, congratulations. Your hazing period is done. Now, that doesn't change the fact that you're a big YouTube sensation, and you will be susceptible to extra scrutiny. But this is what I'm seeing, and I'd love to know your guys' thoughts as well out of Hayden Deegan. Hayden Deegan, on the podium after the race, said something to the effects of, yeah, I was really riding really good, and you know a lot of people doubted me, and you know he's still hey he's still a little hung up on people. Hey, listen, Hayden, you gonna let it go? I think he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because that's the way Brian came up. See, Brian never was on factory elite equipment. He had the one privateer win with Triple X at the Coliseum, where he ghost rode the bike, and then ever since it's just been chaos, create chaos, merchandising chaos. Chaos, chaos, controversy sells type of situation. So I think Danger Boy is taking a little bit of a page out of Dad's book in terms of like, I still want to have a chip on my shoulder and people doubted me and blah, blah, blah. And then last but not least, before we start to move towards the end of this report, but there's a lot of things I hope we get to unpackage before next weekend's race because there's a lot of storylines through if we read between the lines and look through the cracks there's a lot of stuff going on that we can blow apart tension at the honda truck a lot of stuff but did you notice this is insane 40 rider gate in the outdoors 
A two-stroke even made it on the gate. That's how evaporated the field. Did you notice who the top six riders were factory guys? Meaning 34 privateers were on that gate. Typically, you have a minimum of at least half the field factory riders. We had six factory guys on the gate. 34 privateers. Now, that's sick. The industry's bumped. The industry's bummed because those, those privateers are getting massive payouts right now. Top 10 finishes pay some big, big bucks. The factories can live with you. You live to fight another day as long as you're top 10. Because when we show top 10, as long as that manufacturer's in there, they're like, hey, you know, of course they want podiums, they want holies, they want moto wins, they want all that stuff. But you better at least be in the top 10 but even adam cincerillo down in turn one comes back to sixth i believe something like that you got a sixth overall for the day i know that so the reality is it, that was pretty embarrassing in terms of the factories are just evaporated and like i said before a lot of these riders are bailing out did you see in some of the coverage that this half hour intermission between motos it was to hype up the playoff rounds and some of these riders, like Plessinger, like, yeah, I'm really honored to be part of this uh, playoff rounds. And Chase, like, yeah, this is something we need, like others. It was so scripted. It was so so given to them by, by this. This is a real big disaster for the playoff rounds. It's, it's going to come. I mean, they're going to hype it. They're going to do their best. But we saw riders endorse the playoffs that clearly could care less and got paid. And final thoughts. I come to you as a friend, as a motor guy. Somebody wants to see you not only win on the track, off the track, Bup buckle up, strap in, hold on to your hats and your glasses. We're going to have some good stuff to blow apart this Thanks. year. A lot of stories running and running deep, and we're going to blow the lid off it every step of the way because it's not only what we need, it's in fact what we deserve. If you appreciate the content, I want to humbly ask you to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Social media link in the description of this video if you'd like to contact and me. If you there. enjoyed this video, I think you're going to love the next video on your screen. As always, thank you for your time. Don't go over the bars. I'll see you on the next video.